to realize is the difference between character and characterization. So we are looking at character and characterization. Just let me take off some of this off the board. And we are looking at character. And we are looking at characterization. All right then. Characterization. Okay. All right. And when we are looking at character, we are looking at a kind of behavior. So we are looking at how a distinctive mental or moral behavior is manifested in a person. So we are looking at the distinctive T I N C T I V distinctive moral behavior. Distinctive moral behavior. Okay? In a person. And when we are looking at characterization, this particular part of it is indicating a process. So we are looking at the building of character. Building of character. And when I say T-E-R, okay, building of character means that, you know, when you're constructing, you do the foundation, then you go up, and then you reach a roof. No, the building of character in characterization means a process over time. A person can evolve into a different kind of moral state. So, that being said, we are going to look now, firstly, on the characterization of Scout. And who is Scout again? Yes, Scout is our narrator. And Scout is the first person narrator. She's telling the story. But remember, she's telling it how? In retrospect. She's telling the story in flashback. Now she has grown through the story. And she's looking back to tell us how it all happened. So if we're going to look at characterization, we are going to look at it, what we do we see in the opening of the story. We see that in the beginning of the story, we meet Scout and she is not even at primary school as yet. Okay then? She is not at primary school. She is not yet able to go out to school, but she is talkative. She is an, um, she has an inquiring mind. She has a mind that looks bigger than her years, her chronological years. And she is able to express herself quite freely. But there are lots of things that she does not understand. And when we go over in chapter two, we'll see that Scout develops because she goes to school. She goes to school and on the very first day of school, she gets into trouble. She does not like school and she tries lots of tricks to get out of school. She is actually bigger than her class. Why is Scout bigger than her class? She's bigger than her class. Do you remember the things that she did? Yes. She spends her time in her father's lap and she's reading legal papers or he's reading them to her and he's reading the newspaper and she is ingesting all of this adult literature. Remember, she's, she's not yet six. But because of the absence of who? Her mom. There is no mother. So the father in the evening would give her that kind of comfort that the young child needs. So she climbs into his lap and he's doing his work and she's doing it too. So she is ingesting, she is developing, so her mind is bigger than her years. So when she goes to school, you can imagine that she's far brighter than grade one and she finds schools, school is very boring to her because it is not challenging her. So she goes into school and you know, Scout is like this. She is very adamant and she, she'll, she'll fight her way through. And the first day of school, she gets into a fight. All right then. But we go over to chapter three and we see that Scout is able to make up with Walter Cunningham when he's invited to the house 
to have lunch. She gets into problem again. She does not as yet at that time understand how to hold her emotions. She does not able, she's not yet able to keep herself from fighting. And what am I doing? I am looking at characterization. I'm looking at character development. So when you're being asked to say how a person develops in a novel or in a story, you should track how the person moves and responds to different events, become who they were and who they have become as a result of the impact of different events that day they participate in and how it, how it, how, how they react to it. All right then. So in chapter four, Scout evaluates the school system and she decides that it is meaningless. We understand why it is meaningless because she has received an adult type of education. Now, the, the students are still preoccupied with the Radleys, right? And, and Boo, is, Boo Radley is still this phantom person to them. So they begin to dramatize. The role of literature comes, comes in. When we watch, go to the theater, we often see our lives being played out. Well, they were playing out the phenomena of Boo and his family. So they were doing that because they are trying to make sense. It just didn't make sense for them. The, the family in the community, it just did not make sense to them. The way the family was, was situated, cut off from the rest of the community. And in chapter five, we see the scouts begin to shift because Jem now has moved into a new grade. He has become, he is becoming, he, he's growing up. He has little time for her as a girl and Scout begins to shift her mentally. Now she is shifting away from Jem to Calpurnia and she is become fe more feminized. Okay then? And she's going to miss Modi. So she is now developing in the area of femininity. All right then? And then she, we go um, to chapter nine and Scout goes to Finch's Landing because it is Christmas. And she starts learning a lot more things about racism. And we're going to look at that in depth because we want to look at racism as a very important theme in the novel, among other themes. And she goes there and she discovers um, racism in depth, having a conversation with Francis. Now they return home and we see her growing up more because her father is older than, uh, than other men, starting late with his family. And we, we see that Atticus, their father, is able to shoot a mad dog one shot. And they, they are, wow, astonished. We didn't know that our father could do this. So she is growing up and learning more Respecting her father even more, the father becomes more of an, an hero in their sight, things like that. So um, we move forward in, in the novel and we see that Scout and Jem go to church with Calpurnia and we see another side of racism coming out. And she begins to understand uh, the other side of things how the colored persons or the Negro persons live in their community, the way they worship and things like that. Around that time, their father Atticus begins his case with Tom Robinson. And that's another learning experience because the children actually go to court and the scout goes to court and their mind expands. Now, soon after that, and this is, a, this is one of the big points now in, in the characterization process. Because soon after that, after the case begins and it's going near to trial, we see that Scout is able to address a group of men out of fear for her father's life. Because the, I, I don't know if the men would have Atticus says that they would, could have hurt him a little. But why do you think the men went to the courthouse? 
late in the night and tell Atticus, step aside. You know why we have come. We want Tom Robinson. What do you think they were going to do with Tom? Remember, they are not the judge. They are not the sheriff. So, so what do you think they want? They are going to take him out and lynch him. That's what they wanted to do. They didn't want him to go to trial because they didn't think that a black man deserves a trial. And they were going to do their own kind of militia justice. And Scout, with Jem and Dill are there. And she rushes up, rushes up to the men and she starts addressing them in such a way that the men's mouth fell open. So we see that Scout is able to stand up and give a... Normally, Jem would have done it because he's the older of the two. But Scout steps into the ring of men and she starts to address them. She started to talk to them and, and she, she talked them out of, out of their mission. And they left the jail that night and left Tom inside the jail and they, they could not, after Scout's speech, force Atticus to move and let them take Tom to lynch him. So Scout, we see, I'm talking about uh, growing up mentally, not just physically. Now, things began to develop, right? And um, they go back to school and they're having a pageant, you know? So, you know, and Scout gets a part to play. And she, what part did she play? Right, she represented pork, okay, because it's, a, it's, an, it's an agricultural community and each child in the pageant is supposed to represent a part of the agricultural aspects of the community. And she got her, to, she had to be a ham. So, Scout is coming home now in the night and this, this is the big point. They are now being followed by who again? Bob Ewell. Why does Bob Ewell follow the children? He, yes, he wants to get revenge. What happened in the case? Right, although Tom was convicted, wrongfully convicted, what, what right, he, he, he did not rape Mayella. That's right. But a black man could not go for your member. You see, this is a dark novel. I said about stomach. When we spoke about stomach in the last class, you have to have a lot of stomach. So a black man is not worthy to be free in that time. And so the jury was white. The white jury. They sat and they sat and they... And eventually they said, he cannot come out free. And so when we return, we are from the break, we are going to look more deeply at how Scout came into becoming a much developed young person. So if you have any questions on what we have done so far, you can send them in on our various platforms and I will see if I can answer in the final segment when we come back, we answer your questions and wrap up. Stay with us. Hi there, I'm Simon Preston from TVJ. Thank you very much for watching our YouTube channel. To see our latest videos and also to see live events, click here. To see our full videos on onespotmedia.com, click here. Thank you very much for watching. Hi, we haven't left you out. It's Get Moving Kids. Home Workout Series with Jamaica Moves. Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays at 2 p.m. on TVJ. Get Moving! Home Workout Series with Jamaica Moves. Jamaica Move! Mobilize! Flexercise! Jamaica Move! Jamaica Move! Jamaica Move! Mobilize! Flexercise! Come on! Take a selfie! 
Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 8.35 a.m. on... Hi there, I'm Simon Preston from TVJ. Thank you very much for watching us. Reduce your risk of viral illnesses like the flu and coronavirus. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water. Cover your nose and mouth when coughing with a tissue and dispose of it. Avoid close contact with anyone with the cold or flu-like symptoms. If you become ill, please visit your doctor or the nearest health center and share your travel history. The flu and coronavirus can kill. Let's protect each other. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Hi there, I'm Simon Preston from TVJ. Thank you very much for watching our YouTube channel. To see our latest videos and also to see live events, click here. To see our full videos on onespotmedia.com, click here. Thank you very much for watching. COVID-19 tip. Protect yourself and others from getting sick by washing your hands after coughing or sneezing when caring for the sick before, during and after you prepare food before eating, after toilet use, when hands are visibly dirty, and after handling animals or animal waste. Hi there, I'm Simon Preston from TVJ. Thank you very much for watching our YouTube channel. To see our latest videos and also to see live events, click here. To see our full videos on onespotmedia.com, click here. Thank you very much for watching. Reduce your risk of viral illnesses like the flu and coronavirus. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water. Cover your nose and mouth when coughing with a tissue and dispose of it. Avoid close contact with anyone with the cold or flu-like symptoms. If you become ill, please visit your doctor or the nearest health center and share your travel history. The flu and coronavirus can kill. Let's protect each other. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Hi there, I'm Simon Preston from TVJ. Thank you very much for watching our YouTube channel. To see our latest videos and also to see live events, click here. To see our full videos on onespotmedia.com, click here. Thank you very much for watching. COVID-19. Welcome back to Schools Not Out, your daily classroom for CSEC and CAPE subjects. Today we have been analyzing to kill a mockingbird. And before we took the break, we were at the last part of analyzing characterization. And we were saying that characterization is referring to the building of character. And we were looking at the main character, who is the narrator, who is Kaut. And, she has, and we said that she grew up. She grew up through the years. By the time we reached the end of the story, She's not the fighting, impulsive scout that we met at the beginning. So when you're talking about characterization, you want to show the evolution of character, the development of the person. So we were finishing up, and I'm at chapter 31, the last chapter now, where we're just going to clinch that point. Um, this is when they're coming from the pageant, and Scout and Jem are attacked by Boo Radley with a knife. He aims to kill them. And why does he want to kill them? They are Atticus's children. And Atticus dared to defend a Negro man in court. And I'm going to come to the word Negro. Because we have Negro, okay? And we have another word, which is the derogatory of that. Nigger, right? So these are some important words that diction in the novel that you want to pay attention to. Because when you want to reduce the Negro, you say nigger. And when you want to recognize him as a part of humanity, you say Negro. So you want to pay attention to that. Because that aspect of language is very important. So we, are, we were saying now, right? Yes. That the scout's father, Atticus, dared to defend a, a, a Negro man in court. You remember that Alter Radley did not go to prison because his father said that he couldn't share the cell with a Negro. No white man is supposed to share a cell with a Negro. So we see that the racism is deeply ingrained in the novel. So we remember asking about how many persons we can allude the mockingbird to? 
So deeply embedded is this aspect of racism in the novel, black and white. So in chapter 31, as we close, she says, when Boo Radley shuffled to his feet, what is Boo Radley doing there? Boo is the what? Doppler Radley. He was a mystery all these years. Boo is no longer a mystery. Boo is the person who saved the children's lives, right? Do you remember? He is the one who attacked Bob Ewell and prevented him from killing the children in the night. And he carried Jem on his shoulders to the house and Scout was falling behind. Now the doctor has come and everything, everybody's up and then Boo Radley is on the patio. All right then. So when Boo Radley shuffled to his feet, light from the living room windows glistened on his forehead. Every move he made was uncertain. As if he were not sure his hands and feet would make proper contact with the things he touched. He coughed his dreadful railing cough. Why was he coughing so much? Yes, Bo Radley spent 20, well, nearly, nearly half quarter century locked up. He's not seeing the sun, he's ill. And so he's coughing and was so shaken, he had to sit down again. His hand searched for his hip pocket and he pulled out a handkerchief. He coughed into it and then wiped his forehead. So this is called in the presence of Boo Radley. And if you know what I'm saying, you remember? This is called who raced like Dickens past Boo Radley gate. And this is called standing and observing Boo Radley. And later on, what does she do? She leads him through her house and she walks him home. Now, if that is not character development, you tell me. She has moved from a, a person, like a child was been scared out of her wits to be escorting the very man of her imagination and dramatization. And she's escorting him home. So we are looking at moving from fear to confidence. That's what we see happening to Scout. And that's what I'm referring to when we speak about characterization, the, the development of a person. Now, we can look at character. And the, the character that we are going to look at is Aunt Alexandra. So I'm going to take a quick look, just two readings from Aunt Alexandra. And I'm going to turn to page 89. And I am going back to the time when they went to Aunt Alexandra to have Christmas dinner. And who do we meet there? Francis. We meet Francis there and in, the same, in a similar fashion that Scout sat at his father's feet and in his lap. And he was able to imbibe all the legal matters that he was studying. It's a similar thing for Francis. So Scout became a child lawyer in her brain and Francis became what? A prejudiced child in his brain. So I'm on page 88 and they are sitting down and talking and it's after dinner. And, and um, Scout says, they're talking about cooking. Aunt, Aunt, Aunt Alexander is such a, a great cook. So um, Francis says, Aunt Alexander says that she's going to teach me to cook. And you know, Scout and Dill, they are very good friends. And Scout begins to tell him about Dill. And he made a big noise, Francis that is. And Scout says, what's the matter with, with him? Him meaning Dill. I asked, ain't anything the matter with him? And this is what Francis says. You mean that little runt? Grandma says, says stays with Miss Rachel every summer. Grandma says that Dill is a little runt. Do you know who's a runt? A little pig. So here is Aunt Alexandra talking in the presence of Francis and saying Dill is a little pig that Scout is running around with in the summer. Now this is a grown person. She, this is her mindset. So we are talking about what? Character. This is who she is 
right now in our mind. So the difference between character and characterization is characterization is a process of developing and growing and changing morally, morally in your mind. And character, this character, who you are right now. We're saying that Alexandra, Aunt Alexandra. Okay? Grandma says he hasn't got a home. And we know that's not true. Simply because Dale comes to spend summer at Makeup doesn't mean he doesn't have a home. And his parent, his mother would have been single at the time. And you know how it is with single parents. They need to keep the child occupied because they have to work. And so grandma said he hasn't got a home. Scout says he has to. He lives in Meridian. He just gets passed around from relative to relative. And Miss Rachel keeps him every summer, says Francis. Francis, that's not so, says Scout. Francis grinned at me. You're mighty dumb sometimes, Jean Louise. Now, Jean Louise, we know, is Scout's real name. Guess you don't know any better, though. Don't remember what I said. Francis is a product of Aunt Alexandra as much as Scout is a product of her father. What do you mean? She says. If Uncle Atticus lets you run around with stray dogs, that's his own business. Like Grandma says. So it ain't your fault. I guess it ain't your fault. But I'm here to tell you, it certainly does mortify the rest of the family. So you see what I'm saying? So we are hearing through dialogue, which is a technique used by the writer to help us to understand who Aunt Alexandra is. So we are looking into a character. So we get an insight into Aunt Alexandra's character and we see who she really is. Now we're going to move forward because we are digging deep. And we're going to look forward into one theme, which is racism. Now, before I go into racism, remember that when you really know the novel, you can write anything. So you may want to write about a character who is prejudiced, who is Aunt Alexandra. But suppose you were asked to write about family relations, relationships. You could still use that scene to talk about family relationships. So you see, everything is intertwined. There is nothing that can be cut clean out of the novel because we have a family situation right there and we have a theme coming out. So you could easily write about a family relationship situation in which members of the same family are different. So Atticus represents the figure of justice. He's upright and Alexandra represents prejudice so in the family what is he saying enough in the context of a family you don't expect everyone to be alike they are different you can expect them to be different so you can like for example one member of a family and you don't you don't have to like the other because different events impact upon them and their minds are different so so we are going on to look at racism and we are looking at page 42 in this book and here on page 42, I would like to show you something more about um, two words I introduced before. Well, they are outside playing and they are saying that, um, Jem says, you're behaving like you, you believe in hot steam. Because he says, Scout, something's going to happen to you. And he says, and she says, what's hot steam? And Jem says, haven't you ever walked a lonesome road at night and passed by a hot place? Asks Dale. Hot steam, somebody, somebody who can't get to heaven, just wallows around. And she says, how can you stop from passing through one? And they continue the conversation and she says, don't you believe a word he says? She says to Dale. Calpurnia says that's nigger talk. That's nigger talk. Now remember what I said. Negro and nigger. So if you're going to talk nigger talk, that's a derogatory. 
it means that derogatory it means that you have become lower mentally so you're a negro but if you begin to behave a certain way and talk certain things you become a nigger and that was coming from calpurnia so it doesn't mean that only white is against black black is also in themselves um they say derogatory things and black persons also have their own hang up against white well that's all we have for today we were doing the analysis on to kill a mockingbird we hope you grasped most of the points we discussed you can catch a repeat of today's lesson on JNN Today at 4 p.m. and in the school's Not Out Highlights on Saturday between 1 and 4, right here on TVJ. It also will be on video, on demand, on One Spot Media. Until next time, I'm Sherlyn Woodburn. Upcoming next is Principles of Business. I'm Simon Preston from TVJ. Thank you very much for watching our YouTube channel. To see our latest videos and also to see live events, click here. To see our full videos on onespotmedia.com, click here. Thank you very much for watching. Hi! We haven't left you out. It's Get Moving Kids. Home Workout Series with Jamaica Moves. Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays at 2 p.m. on TVJ. Get